The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Monday morning. We kick off trading and volatility still in spades, as they say, folks. S&Ps, negative 57 points, and that is quite a far cry from the lows we had last night. We make a low right on the futures open last night of 42.51. We're a solid 70 points above that price level. We were just up to 43.40 in the S&Ps. The acceleration really begins at about 9.40 p.m. Eastern time last night. You had the market down at 4260 for some context there you're talking about 120 s p points from where we closed out friday's action we reclaim about 70 points right 40 60 yeah 60 to 70 points we are off of the lows right now at 4322 we were a solid 80 points off of the lows nasdaq 100 I mean, yeah, we gap lower, we gap lower, pretty epic gap lower, but man, nothing compared to the run we had last week. To wrap it up again, folks, the NASDAQ 100 traded from almost a 12,000 handle to finish the week at 14,200. You traded up about 9% from the lows of Thursday to Friday. Did you hear that? 9% the entire index traded from basically the lows of Thursday morning to the Friday close of action. Today, we're right back above 14,000 in the NASDAQ 100. You get the Dow right now, negative 418 points right now. So going along is what's going on is you have a lot of escalating tensions over, unfortunately, with the war going on between Russia and Ukraine. You have financial sanctions ratcheting up. You have SWIFT coming into play. Uh, Russia really becoming isolated. That potentially going to put a hurt on some of the energy prices going on in Europe. War anytime volatility uh yeah but really quite a change from friday you open it up last night and markets saying nope two percent just like that bitcoin a little bit lower right now down about 2.3 percent off 19 900 dollars excuse me at 38,000. crude as you'd expect spiked higher made it to come on cooperate 99 dollars was the spike high and uh as the market has gained a bit you've seen crude pull back a bit still up about 4.3 percent to 95 dollars and 57 cents you get the gold contract right now up 29 dollars at 1917 folks if you're looking to get in the gold market my dad tom o'brien puts out an outstanding gold report today's issue weekly issue 1000 and 36 he just put it out he's got a couple new buys out there if you are a gold report subscriber check that out uh 1036 divided by 52 what's he at he's at 19.92 years is that right if that's if everyone's at 52 is, is he one week away i'm just doing 52 no he's got a few weeks to get to 20 years exactly remarkable uh 1036th issue just published for the gold report gold this morning up 29 dollars at 1917 gold spiked to 1935 on that high yesterday uh i was just reading my dad's gold report that was published this morning which is why i'm uh paying close attention he was talking about that action up to 1976 man you pull back to 1878 just like that you're back to 1916 gold experiencing big Big time volatility, man, the commodity market, right? Boy, if you're a commodity futures trader right now, God bless you. Good luck to you. I hope you have some fast fingers because some of the moves in those markets, remarkable. Uh, silver right now, up 61 cents. Silver was up to 25.70, traded all the way down to a 23 handle on Thursday. Right now, you're right back in the middle of that range. And we jump to notes and bonds. We have a spike to higher price and lower yield. Just like that, you push the highs of Thursday. Remarkable action. Right now, you're up a solid 29 ticks right now, trading at 127.03 on the 10-year. We jump over to the VIX right now. Volatility index back above 30. We're nearing 32. You make it to a high this morning. What did we get to? 33.51 in the volatility index. All right, let's jump around just to some of the FANG stocks, see how it kicking things off this morning uh boy there's almost so much to talk about right in terms of the geopolitical issues and how they're shaping this stuff it's pretty historic folks um you have germany 
over the weekend, signaling that they will be spending 2% of their GDP, ratcheting up defense spending. It's going to change the whole landscape of Europe and NATO. Talk about backfiring in Putin's face. Uh, the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian president, um, pretty courageous, to put it lightly, in a few words out there. And uh, not exactly what Putin had imagined, but unfortunately, we're a far cry from this thing being over, man. Um, so we'll see how it plays out. But the market, a bit skittish, to say the least. All right, let's jump around to some of the headlines I had pulled up. Of course, it's going to be heavy fighting in Ukraine, damages the prospects for Russia talks. Uh Next 24 hours are key. Now, yeah, this one's the live update that we're dealing with here. They began talks with Moscow at a long shot bid to end President Putin's invasion. Um, as the Russian army's offer of a humanitarian corridor out of Kiev raised fears, it was planning a full scale assault on the capital. Um, yeah, I, I don't imagine that going anywhere, but but I hope it does. You know, uh, it says that. That simple. Let's jump around to some of the stocks that are moving today. Uh, Berkshire was out with their numbers over the weekend, reported annual profit, uh, record annual profit, excuse me, in 2021, helped by its large investment in Apple. Uh, they also bought back a record $27 billion in stock last year. BRK, what are we going with? B A. Uh, we'll go with B. Down a bit. You had quite a run with the market yesterday. Now, I, I was talking about recently, if you take this thing and you take a look at the start it had in 2020 but then really caught up in 2021 apple having a big part of that uh actually got ahead of kathy wood and arc uh talk about a case of the tortoise versus the hare uh the tortoise gets it done with berkshire as they rise above arc's performance arc of course uh one of the best 2020s to date and one of the worst 2021s to follow and it's just uh been quite a slide to to, to kick off 2022 as well arc putting this thing quite a bounce from 56 to 67 but man 67 you're only back to barely where you're trading last tuesday or wednesday prices and some of the stocks man they just continue to struggle uh for her fund all right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon shares, <coughs> excuse me, holding up relatively well. You know, my dad was talking about on his program, I was as well last Thursday. Um, when you had markets down dramatically Thursday morning, man, stocks that were behaving well, all right, pay attention to them. Now, yes, there was a huge change of shift where war broke out. So the fact that they were thinking the Fed would be afraid to raise as quickly and as ferocious so growth stocks would be off the hook for a 50 basis point hike. So that's some of what you saw there. But also, there was a lot of strength there, folks. Okay, rates are coming. They're coming fast. They're coming quick. Whether we get 50 basis points or not, the market is aware, folks, that we are going up. You're getting like seven or eight hikes probably in the next two years. We got to get inflation under control. So they're aware of that. Pushing off 50 basis points to 25 for the March meeting is important, but it's not life changing. And some of those moves on Thursday, when you had the market down at dramatic lows here, okay, and you had stocks charging higher right out of the gate, all right? CRM was one of them. Uh, uh, Roku looks like maybe it did find a low that was accelerating from 110 up to that area. Uh, there were almost too many to name, but pay attention to those equities, how they fared. Thursday and Friday was an important day. Amazon was one of them as well as Amazon was higher by 1030 that morning and finished up two plus percent. Look at Amazon, barely down about 20 bucks right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now down 50 points on the dot, trading at 43.29. NASDAQ down 132 right now, <clears throat> jumping over to one of the many stories that's taken shape uh, right now with everything going on geopolitically. So BP, BP, now this is an opinion piece over here, but BP does have lots of articles out there talking about that they plan to offload their about 20% stake in Rosneft, the Russian state oil company. Uh, amazing that some of these companies, right, are just in bed with Putin anyway, you know, for the longest time. It's like, imagine if somebody comes to you and says, you know, you want to do business with Putin, you can buy 20% of his company, you'll make some money. Uh, over my dead body, am I doing business with Putin, folks, okay? But they're in there with 20% of the state oil company, um, and only when Putin and invades other democratic countries, do they say, ah, maybe we shouldn't be in business with Vladimir? You know, I, we know how that's go, how it goes, but man. Uh, and one of the things they're talking about in just this opinion piece is saying that, you know, basically they're left with two alternatives is the mainstream consensus in terms of either trying to find a buyer. And already I was reading news reports out this morning that they can't find a buyer. Um, I mean, even some of Russia's most close closest allies are, are not championing to put it lightly what he's doing here um it's a scary situation because it was a miscalculation on his part and now he's in a bad spot and you put a bad person in a bad spot with a lot of power it's not a good situation which is why you know um it's very difficult to be optimistic even as things are going as it appears that ukraine is holding up okay um Putin is in a bad spot right now, and that's a scary thing. Uh, uh, nonetheless, back to this. They were talking about that either two things, right? Either you basically just give up the shares, give up the ownership because you can't hold it, or you find a buyer. If they can't find a buyer, they're probably going to give up the shares. Um, and what they're talking about is maybe you just put it in a trust designed to put the future dividends to sale. Uh, either way, either way, uh, they get 20% of that company and they're going to try and divest it and they're not going to be able to find a buyer and I, I imagine they may just walk away from it is how it may unfold excuse me all right and yeah this was talking about uh that's the next one that we're going to even talk about on that list and there's bp um as they just have to divest those assets and you're talking about a multi-billion dollar position uh, um 
yeah, 20 percent stake in the oil producer Rosneft following the. Yeah. Um, there you go. So First Horizon's getting acquired by TD Bank in an all cash deal. Uh, Starbucks, it's not a ton of fundamental news for specific equities out there this morning. Home builders received double upgrades to buy from underperform for Toll and Pulte uh, at Bank of America. Firms note underperformance by home builders in 2022 despite strong earnings and guidance and feels the risk reward profile is now favorable. Pulte rose 1%, tolls up 1%. Uh, I tell you folks, I live in Bartow, Florida, right in Lakeland. And man, we got developments going on up here and i'll have to get the exact uh, the exact companies that are building them they are mammoth mammoth developments i'm talking about 700 single family homes i think in one of the developments 400 in the other and it's right near where our development is and what's so interesting is that it's so cool seeing them lay this out from beginning to end where you know, they wipe out the whole area, right? There used to be a land that used to be cows on it, folks, okay? It was great. We used to be able to walk by with the cows as a bummer because now they got a big development. There's going to be a bunch of houses, but that's how things work, right? Uh, used to be a bunch of cows on a big field. They wipe out the field, uh, and then they basically have now installed all the infrastructure, right? And just being able to see it happen, right, as our neighbor, um, the roads, you got electric in every single spot, right? They got cul-de-sacs built. They have sidewalks even built right now. They've built the entire infrastructure, and now they're just going to start popping houses. And, and they're going to break ground uh, probably in the next couple of months, and they're going to have 400 to 700 houses that are going to be in there. Um, and you're seeing it. You're seeing it because land out here, Florida especially, right? We're getting a nice influx of people that want to live in Florida. Um, but man, some of the, you know, you see these developments, folks, and poof, it's, uh, it's a good time to be a home builder, even with housing, uh, potentially looking a little toppy. Um, but yeah. All right. Jumping around. What else we got? Yeah. No other real action there. I mean, it's going to be interesting, folks. We're going to be, uh, in for an interesting open to say the least right now with all of the volatility in play i mean you have talks going on, on right it's such a fluid situation of war you have russia with their commodity base uh, i was looking at liquid natural gas right that's a big one of course finland finland gets like 94 percent of their lng from russia uh, i'm not sure how they're gonna fare the eu gets about 31 percent on average so about three out of ten um Another way to put that, 70%, though, of the liquid natural gas is coming from other parts besides Russia. But that's going to be the most interesting part to see how that plays out in Europe. Um, I don't envision that Europe can just cut Russia off commodity-wise right now. So how is that going to play out? I don't know. But that's, that's I mean, the commodity, man, whew, you watch out. Crude, 95 bucks, just hit 99. 100 bucks is the high from last Thursday. Uh, I don't imagine risks are to the downside on crude to any dramatic fashion um risks are going to push that market to the upside all right let's jump around to some of the travel stocks in the u.s we got delta down about a buck right now with the market all these stocks charging higher as well you know domestically folks jet blue quite the resurgence i'm still trying to find myself looking at some of these equities in particular because i feel like and this is my own personal bias but we are at the beginning of a breakout folks um you know the tragedy going on in ukraine right now you can't overstate it with words but domestically you know we've been clammed up for two years folks it's remarkable uh my birthday is in march i'm coming up on the third birthday since the pandemic hit now, that's another way of saying two years, right? Because I literally had my birthday, folks, the weekend that everything got shut down uh, in 2020. It's like two years have just gone by like that. I feel like we almost lost two years. Uh, we didn't, but time is a weird deal. Uh, everybody's been crammed up, right? And this breakout's going to persist, folks, for like a year or two. And I imagine these travel stocks are just nearing the beginning of eventually being able to take off. And they are so far from some of their highs. I mean, JetBlue, 15 to 22, right? I mean, you know, I haven't even made it up to Boston yet, folks, with my son to see my family. I mean, there's so many things. He was born over a year ago. Um, so many things that people are in situations like myself. That trip is happening. Maybe we'll go to Disney. That's happening. I'm a member of Busch Gardens now. I'm a member of the Tampa Zoo now. Um, all of that 
Like, let's go. It's happening, and it's not stopping anytime soon. Well, after we go to Boston, maybe we got to go to Vegas as well. Why not? Maybe put a Vegas trip in there, right? Not sure I'll be bringing uh, Tommy to all the casinos. A little Tommy, but we might bring him there, bring him to some of the uh, the sites, the beautiful sites around, around Las Vegas. But you get the point. And these stocks are still so far off their lows. Uh, Airbnb is another great one, you know? Um, you're going to be see some real volatility on this equity. Okay, there's your volatility for you, man. You were just trading February 16th at over 190. You pushed 140 on that pullback. You're at 155. Uh, I wouldn't pay attention to that channel line. I was trying to find where we are on that channel line. You know, where that falls, you could say that you were in a channel line here and you broke out. Maybe that's it coming back to test it before we trade higher. Uh, but Airbnb, one of those stocks is going to benefit greatly as we break out. And people want to travel, folks, get back to life. All right, this is going to be an interesting open. We get the opening bell in three minutes, folks. We'll be right back for that opening bell. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got markets. It's catching a little bit of a bit as we open uh, and ring that opening bell. Back to a one-minute chart to see the volatility. There's a little bit of a spike. Right now, you're down 51 points in the S&Ps. You're down 118, but again, a little bit of a spike on the open there, up to 14,009. Dow uh, giving it up a little bit as we got growth trading higher. We have the Dow trading lower. We got a yield right now of one8 Eight eight percent. You basically drop a tenth of a percentage point from Friday. The moves in the yield, folks, 
it just does not usually happen this way. 10 basis points day to day, 20 basis point swings um, over the period of a couple days. Well, you also don't get 9% moves in the NASDAQ 100 over the period of about 24 to 36 hours, as was the case on Thursday. Just crazy action in this index. Uh, even crazier to think you go from 14,000 to 13,000, back to 14,000, all in the span of Wednesday to Friday action in quite a market capitalization index when you think about the impact of the market cap. Okay, we got a great week of earnings coming up, man, and we kick things off. We got some companies out today. Zoom is out with their numbers. Yeah, this is always interesting, folks. Zoom, accelerating higher ahead of their earnings. You're up 1.9% right now. We jump over to the Analyze tab. You want some volatility, folks? There's some volatility for you. $23 is priced into their earnings tonight. Uh, now, that's just for today. You want action through the week. You're going to pay $25, folks. I mean, that's just, yeah, that's the weekly. I was, for a second, I was thinking, are we, are we going out to the mark? And at the money, put or call, you're basically paying about 12 bucks which is almost 10%. You have to be directionally correct and you have to have the stock move 10% to make money if you're trading a simple buy, uh, a put or a call. Now, here's what I'll say about Zoom. The demise has been pretty spectacular as we all kind of bared witness, got to bear witness from 588 down to 128. All right, you're dealing with a company now that's basically one quarter of the size that it was when it was pushing 588, even less than that. You dollars right now, obviously 588. Yeah, what are you, five, almost five times as big. I mean, they were pushing some really lofty valuations. Right now, Zoom is only pushing a PE of about 35. That's a lot more reasonable, to put it lightly, folks, okay? Sometimes PEs get so out of whack that they basically mean nothing. Right, you got companies trading at 100 times PE. You got well, I mean, you got companies making no money. They have no PE because they have no earnings. Okay, so then it's all theoretical about what they're going to make in the future. Zoom is a company that is profitable. That is a growth company. Nowhere near what they thought they were once. But at 125, folks, I would start paying attention to Zoom. You were trading at 107 back in June of 2019. All right, you're trading now with a PE ratio of 30. Five, much more reasonable. Another stock to look at, Target. Target's down 1.3%. Now, Target has their numbers, which is why I bring them up. I think they're out tomorrow before the bell. Pretty decent move for Target when you think about this equity. You don't often see, um, I mean, what is that pushing? 7%, 8%, 7%, $15 move for a $196 stock. Now, Target's out with their numbers before the bell. And Target, all right, Target, you're talking about a PE and Target of 15 and you're talking about a dividend of 1.8%. Now, I do have a small portion of Target in my retirement portfolio, folks. Um, and if you're looking to get in, we're right at the 382. We're coming into earnings, and you've got a PE of 15, and you have a dividend of 1.8%. If you're a little bit worried about market volatility right now, especially on some of those growth equities, as we are raising interest rates, uh, Target might be a nice play. Getting a dividend play of 1.81% right now with these prices. You're getting into the 382 of the full pullback. You're also getting into an area, previous area of resistance could turn into support at the 382. There's nothing stopping this thing from going right back to the 618, though. So maybe you uh, maybe you get in with a partial position, trades back down. You have some more equity to build in if this market really has a pullback. Because we're going to be in a period of volatility, folks. We really are. We got some time here. In terms of, you know, you think we're going to be able to jack rates for two straight years and we're not going to have volatility, even if the market knows it's coming. Uh, but again, one of those equities that was on my radar, our Target, I've been looking at it for my newsletter. Haven't gotten into it just yet, but we're in an interesting position and we'll see. I'm going to have an update out later this afternoon for my subscribers. And it's one of the equities I'm looking at. I am. And maybe you start a partial position ahead of their earnings because anytime you get down to a P.E. ratio of 15, your mind can can understand those numbers, folks, okay? You're a lot more protected when you're buying at a company with a PE of 15 if you have a long-term horizon because you're gonna get near those valuations if you hold it for five to 10 or 15 years, in theory, automatically, right? The price to earnings over 15 years, you've gotten it all back. You've held the equity for 15 years, you paid for it, you've earned all of that back over 15 years. Now, you should make more than that, okay? But you get the point as opposed to when you're trading something that has a multiple of 100 to 200, which many great companies do, okay? Don't get me wrong, 
All right, Amazon, one of my favorite. Let's see what they're trading at right now for a multiple on earnings, because it's pretty lofty, all right? Even with the sales they have, it's pretty lofty in terms of their PE, 65.9 they have on Bloomberg right now. 65.9 is Amazon's PE, and that is on some pretty staggering earnings, but their earnings have pulled back a bit as they've been spending more. Um, but you jump over to Amazon, that's caught in a little, little bit of a bit. So you, you got to have quick fingers, folks, because some of these pullbacks, you're talking about Amazon at almost 2700 a 1000 bucks off the highs, might not have been a bad deal. Um, Microsoft has had quite a pullback, okay? Almost makes it to the 382. Now, Microsoft, some of these multiples, let's just take a, a look on my own curiosity, what we're dealing with with Microsoft here. A PE of 34, not bad for some of these companies, the way they're growing, folks, okay? Now, the one that I wanted to finish with is Facebook. Okay. Now, Facebook, there's two sides to Facebook, folks, all right? I am not a fan of Facebook in terms of the environment that they've created on their social media sites, et cetera. Um, but, boy, you're looking for a company, folks, with a PE of 15, Facebook, and the growth prospects they could have. We all know the risks that come with it, okay? Mark Zuckerberg may spend every dime that this company makes on building a metaverse platform that never comes to fruition. But I don't envision that being the long-term play, okay? They still make boatloads of money. They still have brands outside of Facebook that make boatloads of money, like Instagram, which is super popular among younger kids as well. Um, WhatsApp, which is basically how people communicate all over Europe. And you got a PE of 15, and you just pull back from 384 to 200. All right. Again, an area doesn't mean it can't go lower, folks. OK, but in an environment with some real volatility, you're seeing some huge haircuts here. I mean, DraftKings comes to mind. I've been talking about them and they've gotten quite a little pop over the last week. I mean, look at this. We were down to 16 last Tuesday. And just like that, you're up to 22. You just gained six bucks. You just gained like 40 percent on this equity. Now, that's cherry picking the lows. OK, and these are small numbers. All right. But we're talking about a company now. I've talked about it. The market cap of these companies are important. I was talking about DraftKings when they were at like seven or eight billion. Now you're at nine billion. Okay, you get down the risk when you're at with some of these levels of a DraftKings being at seven billion dollars. Somebody's going to scoop them up at four or five billion, folks. So this thing is not going to trade down to a billion or two or three billion dollars because somebody will scoop them up. That's a brand that's worth it. So these are all my opinions. Okay, they come with bias, but we're seeing some substantial pullbacks across the board here, and. Uh, we're going to, I got a little bit sidetracked from the earnings there because I started off with Zoom and went to growth and all that, but we're going to come back and go over some other companies. I talked about Salesforce. They have their numbers tomorrow. Uh, we got Best Buy, Costco, Kohl's, Domino's, Dollar Tree. We'll be right back, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, negative 43 points, NASDAQ negative 104, pulling pretty steady to where we were uh, on the open. And we got dominoes up here. So dominoes, I got a couple of Fibonacci's. My chart looking a little bit congested right now. But before we get into it, we got dominoes. They're out with their numbers. No, February 24th, is that right? They already come out with their numbers? Am I wrong here? They did. Okay. Okay. Shame on me. What was I looking at? I'm not sure. Okay, we'll jump around. Nonetheless, Target, back to Target real quick. Uh, 198.39, down about four tenths percent ahead of their numbers tomorrow. We also get, uh, let's jump around because I want to make sure I'm looking at the right thing. Yeah, we do. So we get Kohl's numbers. Uh, they'll be out with their numbers, I believe, after the bell tomorrow. So Kohl's, taking a look at the weekly here. Just been chopping around between about 46 and 60 for Kohl's. You saw that gap higher in January on some news. We've backed off a bit, uh, and they have about a $6 move. So you're looking at about 11 to 12% 11 to move priced in for their earnings. Yeah, we get Salesforce tomorrow after the bell as well. Yeah, and Domino, um, excuse me, and Kohl's is going to be before the bell tomorrow, excuse me. So we get Target before the bell tomorrow. We get Kohl's before the bell tomorrow, a little retail. We get Salesforce after the bell tomorrow. Uh, Salesforce, $16 move priced in. Already talked about them, quite the pullback there. We get Dollar Tree on Wednesday before the bell. Dollar Tree? DLTR is their symbol. Yeah, this thing has been quite an acceleration, um, rising from 85 to 150 on the premise that they're going to be able to charge more than a dollar from now on. Uh, some of their investors, activist hedge fund investors, pushing them to raise prices. They come out with earnings and basically say they are raising prices, uh, and it doesn't matter. Everyone's paying it. This thing is pushing up 2.4% ahead of their numbers. Uh, projected revenue, they're selling a lot of dollar items, $7.12 billion. 7.12 billion. Um, yeah, so we'll see how they come out with their numbers. You jump over to the Analyze tab for Dollar Tree. You're talking about a $15 move priced in, so just more than a 10% move priced into that equity. Basically, as you push all-time highs coming into those numbers. Uh, let's see. What else we got wrapping the season up? Uh, the, the week up, excuse me. Yeah, I think we have – so forwarding to Thursday, we got Best Buy. No, BBY, right? right? Yes, Best Buy. Yeah, they're out with their numbers Thursday, looking at about similar move, 11 to 12% move priced in. Now, keep in mind, some of the volatility priced in for these earnings is just 
market volatility with a VIX trading above 30. So if you're thinking about trading options in any way, and I'm always loving options during earnings season, if you're thinking about it, right, you have to say to yourself, okay, I'm paying volatility for market volatility and I'm paying volatility for earnings volatility for this equity. You have to ask yourself on both fronts if you think the market is going to do what you think because you might think that Best Buy is going to be a great stock and they're going to trade higher and there's no way they're going to trade down $10 because there's too much volatility priced into this equity for earnings, especially to the downside. But what if the market volatility to the downside takes everything lower? We're in quite a market right now. So you kind of want to have both of those paired. If you're making trades, um, keep in mind you're getting paid some volatility or you're paying some volatility premium just for the market volatility. Okay, And you're going to experience some market volatility, which is why the premiums are a little bit higher than maybe usual. Uh, but Best Buy, they're out with their numbers. Quite a pullback for Best Buy. You know, I mean, you take a look at this one. You put a little Fibonacci number on here, and you're talking about right at the 50% on Best Buy from the COVID lows of 48 bucks get up to 142 And you've been shopping around right on that line since about December 20th. This is a weekly bar. So you're talking about almost two full months of chopping around near a a low of 96 to an upper boundary of about 102. You come into earnings barely in the positive today. Always interesting to see how some of these equities trade coming into numbers. Best Buy uh, looking ahead of their earnings up by about 90 cents. Okay, we get a couple others I want to look at. We got Kroger. Is that KR? Yeah, Kroger's out with their numbers. I believe that's going to be as well. Is that Friday before the bell potentially? What's March 3rd? Nope, that's Thursday. We're staying on Thursday. Kroger out with their numbers Thursday. Now, this one's an interesting one. Groceries, look at this run, from 20 bucks to 46. It's been a one-way ship. Um, I mean, quite the trend line we got going on here. I'm just going to add a simple trend line on the bottom. Maybe a little linear regression doesn't exactly match up, but quite the trend to higher prices for Kroger. Now, they're out with their numbers. Not quite the volatility that some of the other equities have. Still about a 6% move priced in. They'll be out with their numbers Thursday. Um, yeah, not sure how they, they proceed. We don't really have any Kroger's around here. Uh, went to a Kroger's on vacation last year. I was not a fan of my experience in there, but that's kind of anecdotal. And then Costco. We get Costco numbers on Thursday as well. $21 move. Not quite the volatility at all uh, that they're used to coming in at 516 I mean, that we're used to, I should say, just the volatility priced into many equities. Uh, this thing's been quite a rocket ship, up to 571 from almost 300 last year. You started off 2020 at 280, so you more than double the share price. A little bit of a pullback with the market to kick things off, but Costco sitting relatively near all-time highs at 517. You're up to 571. I mean, even from the run we had last year, all right, this pullback, look at that. We get right to the 382. Got to love these Fibonacci's, folks. Look at that. You get right to the 382, a 470. You pull back 100 bucks. That's from the entire move from last year, March, all the way up to 571 this year. You touch that 382 line, and I love when this happens. <clears throat> Your area of support is a prior area of resistance. Um, boy, you ever get like an ADC to D leg? We get some earnings, and you plow past the B point. You're talking about an A to B leg that's 270 points. Coming off 470, you know, 670, 740, 740, this thing would bring it to if that's ever an ABCD. But yeah, the 382, it bounces right off that level. All right, let's see how some of the FANG stocks are trading as this market's been open for about 20 minutes now. We jump to Amazon shares down 1% at 3,046. We jump to Microsoft shares right now, down half a percent. Apple shares down about half a percent. Google shares off 1% right now. Tesla shares jumping around. Tesla up 2.2%. We jump to some of those growth stocks that have been hurt recently. Zoom up 1.4%. Roku shares down two tenths percent. I've talked about DraftKings recently, sitting down about four tenths. Penn National, another big gaming company, if you want to get into the action, they're the ones that own Barstool Sports. Uh, Penn, they also own a bunch of tracks. Uh, from 142 to 49 bucks, man. Early in COVID, you were at $39 before you sold off to three. These companies, man, you talk about some volatility. Watch out. Uh, Commodity-wise, crude up $3.22. I mean, you look at this, folks. There's basically no pullback, even from December, right? Take a look at the daily. Almost no pullback on this chart from 66 bucks, and we're just pushing highs at 94 bucks. Gold contract right now. Come on, cooperate. 
up 28 bucks at 1915. Gold above the highs we had in early June of 2021. We put this thing on a three year weekly. Uh, yeah. 2089 may be in store, folks, as we push those highs recently in gold. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, billable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we got a market that's bouncing right now. We got the S&Ps negative by only 36 points right now. NASDAQ 100 negative by just 66. You take a look at where we were overnight, man. You had the S&Ps 90 points lower than where we're at currently at 42.50 on the flash open at 6 p.m. Eastern time. You had the NASDAQ 100 breach a level of 13,683, even if you take the low that we chopped around at at about 1030, you're talking about 13,786. We're more than 300 points above that price level. You're within a stone's throw of the highs that we had on Friday. Jumping back, thanks to our man 23, or uh, 23, I don't know if you're a man, woman. Uh, in the YouTube Tigers Den, I had Papa John's up there, PZZA. Domino's is DPZ, there we go. So they are out with their numbers on Tuesday. You're talking about a $36 move priced into a stock trading at 424. We take a look at this equity. We put it on a daily, quite a pullback from 567. And if you take a look at this thing, uh, maybe another area that you're coming into a nice area. You touched the 618 last week. You're also back to an area that was resistance. Maybe that 
turns into support. I'm talking about the highs of 2020. Highs of 2020, 435. We're sitting just under that level at 424 right now uh, for Domino's out with their numbers on Tuesday. All right, folks, I appreciate you tuning in as we wrap things up. Let's take a look at the VIX. We get the VIX right now, trading at 3076 on a weekly basis. You take out the flash high we had during COVID when it began. Uh, we make a high last week. 37.79. I'll have to notate this on that chart to keep them in mind. Yeah, maybe that's where you get a high. Maybe we get a little bit of a sell-off. I have the previous highs up here on the chart, and you see that's basically correlating to the area that we've seen a little bit of volatility wane on some of uh, these spikes that we've seen previously. But uh, yeah, 37.79. We'll see. Pretty tough when you're dealing with geopolitical issues. Uh, when volatility just may pop up anytime when it's headline driven like it is right now. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting your day with me. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Larry Pezzavento live at 11. Trade what you see at noon. Steve Rose live at 1 o'clock. Dave White live at 2 o'clock. Tom O'Brien, my dad, live from 3 till 4. We got a two way market, folks. We got the SPs negative by 40. We got the 10 year yield at about 1.9%. Stay tuned for Basil, folks. He's coming up now. Have a great week.